Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, 10 past noon, so good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Saba Seresh, and I am a computer science researcher here at Fermilab. Um, and uh, today I will be covering um, different usages of uh, HDF5 in um, high energy physics. Uh, I would like to thank organizers for uh, of uh, HDF user group meeting uh, to give us the opportunities so that we can discuss uh, what we have uh, used and what we have learned in uh, context of uh, HDF5. Mm. So. Um, so, so for several years now, uh, Fermilab uh, has been investigating the use of HDF5 for large-scale analysis of experimental high-energy physics data. Uh, we had a variety of requirements for running jobs at HPC facilities and uh, an alternative to grid-based processing. So these requirements were matched very well by use of HDF5. Um, like uh, parallel writing capabilities, efficient management, and access to columnar data, and compressed storage. And we will be touching on each of these topics um, in the next coming slides. Uh, we have now evaluated HDF5 in a wide range of HTTP use cases, from raw detector data storage and retrieval to high-speed event selection during the later um, data analysis stages. Um, and our goal has been to bring HDF5 into HEP processing as a standard tool for data storage and access. Uh, in this talk, we will present a historical view, or as uh, we were preparing the talk, maybe a prehistoric view, or perhaps a historical view of uh, work that has transpired uh, the current state of projects here and indicate what we see as useful future directions. Um, in the next slide, I have uh, put up the project's timeline here. Um, so this all work started about five years ago and uh, continues till today. Uh, we will be talking about work done and results of four projects, um, which led one into the next. Um, the first one was the big data project and that started out by looking at the use of Spark to process HTTP data uh, that was stored in HDF5. Um, and at that time, both Spark and HDF5 were new to HTTP processing. Um, the next one uh, project was a Fermilab, uh, lab-directed uh, LVRD project, uh, which concentrated on using HDF5 for storage of data and parallel processing at large scale using MPI. Um, and then the next project that uh, is still an ongoing project is a SIDAC4 project. Uh, which involves many parts, uh, but all sharing the idea of using HPC native tools, including HDF5 for HTTP analysis tasks. Um, the HTTP uh, Computational Center of Excellence uh, Input Output uh, Storage or the iOS project uh, is the next one that is investigating HDF5 for general HTTP data storage. Um, so these projects resulted in a variety of papers and some concepts and software libraries that are in use now. So the first project is the CMS Big Data project, where we tried to answer the big question of uh, can big data tools such as Spark and HPC resources uh, benefit uh, HTTP's data and compute intensive statistical analysis to improve time to physics. Um, the CMS experiment is one of the major experiments at LHC at CERN, and in 2012, uh, it was co-discoverer of the Higgs boson. It's a huge experiment with about 2,500 physicists, and uh, it produces enormous data, and that's why it's interesting to look at parallel analysis tools, and uh, that's why we partnered with CMS to investigate Spark as a parallel analysis tool for columnar data that was stored in HDF5. So uh, HEP had traditionally used tree structured data. So an example is on the, uh, on the topmost table um, as an example. Uh, the way we organized data was in the form of tables and used HDF groups uh, to describe the tables. And then the columns were described as the data sets in HDF5. 
Um, what we discovered was that uh, Spark was not able to handle data stored in HDF format well. Uh, the reading was slow, building of data frame was slow. Um, we did see scaling performance. We did see some scaling in the results, but overall performance was, was not up to the mark. Um, we did MPI data parallel work uh, just of the same problem, and we were able to clearly see that uh, this organization that we have does work well, um, and uh, a simple C++ MPI program reading the same data was much, much faster than what we had with Spark. Uh, for us, one of the attractions of Spark was the high-level language it used for describing data manipulation, but uh, with the way the data is organized and with the Python tools and the data science tools available, you know, so we were able to achieve um, uh, similar with, uh, with very high processing speed. Uh, and this led to the LDRD project, which we used uh, from, uh, which used data from different experiments. Uh, so just a, a recap of the takeaway uh, message. Uh, I will be probably repeating myself. Um, it, it, that for us, HDF5 is a good part of this work and the findings led us to the LDRD work that I will be covering next. Um, so, so far uh, in timeline, we had only worked with the CMS data and the CMS experiment. Um, for the LDRD project, we worked with neutrino experiments. Uh, the main thrust of Fermilab today is neutrino physics. Um, Experiments run from small scale test of detector technology to the largest neutrino experiments in the world. Uh, neutrinos are the least well understood particles in nature um, and they are very difficult to observe. So an experiment like CMS, for example, does not observe them. They only infer their existing from the lack of uh, the, some signals. Uh, a neutrino detector like Dune observes uh, the results of neutrino interacting in the detector. So that's the kind of, you know, our transition from uh, the, the CMS-like data to, to a different set of experiments uh, in the neutrino land. So several experiments at Fermilab are investigating the nature of neutrinos. Um, so the, a, a Fermilab-supported uh, lab research grant was used to further this work in columnar storage of detector data and uh, demonstrated use of uh, parallel processing with MPI. So the question we tried to answer there was that can Python ecosystem and HPC resources replace the traditional batch oriented file processing uh, that is used uh, for large scale um, HEP um, data processing. Um, so we used data from uh, a liquid argon in a test beam uh, uh, Lariat experiment. It's aimed to study particle tracks to better understand how different types of particles, um, in particular electrons and photons, interact in liquid argon and how the interactions appear in collected data. So this uh, design or the, the studies and the findings will be used to guide future neutrino detector design. Uh, we partnered with uh, Lariat to evaluate the performance of data parallel Python programs at scale. So a little bit more about Lariat data. It was about 42 terabytes of digitized waveforms. Um, and uh, there were more than 15 million events, 480 wires per events, and about more than 3,000 samples per wire. And uh, we through that project, we developed a C++ library to make simpler the writing of tabular data into HDF5. Um, we process data one event at a time. That is a very um, a traditional or a typical way uh, uh, data is processed in HEP, uh, any processing frameworks and all. So we want the file to contain data sets that span all the events. And that's what you saw in um, the CMS data organization. And that's the kind of organization that we continue to, to pursue. The library is now used by several experiments um, and we will talk about them. Um, we wrote the data to a single compressed HDF5 file, about 4.2 terabytes on disk. And this uh, particular task was done before parallel writing of compressed data was working. So it was all a sequential and a serial program that took about 36 days of running in a single process to finish and uh, 
well, the good thing is that it finished and it did not crash, uh, crash on us and the machine uh, stayed alive. Um, so our uh, demo program did the first few steps of Lariat data processing, uh, like read and decompress data. And then on each wire using uh, FFT and filtering and then inverse FFT to perform noise reduction. Um, the code was written in Python using MPI for Pi, H5Pi, and NumPy. Uh, we were able to run uh, tests at scale on Cori and uh, were able to show nearly perfect scaling from 200 to 1200 nodes. And uh, so, so for us, up till this point, we have seen excellent reading performance for properly structured data and files in HTF5. The tabular organization in memory resulted in um, simple analysis code uh, with implicit data parallelism and no MPI calls uh, present in physicists' code. That was an important aspect. So taking what we have and the library that was developed in the LDRD project, so we uh, moved on to supporting uh, development of a user-friendly analysis environment using Python data science tools and columnar data stored in HTF5. Uh, we work with NOVA. Uh, they were first adapters of uh, HTF5 and tuples tabular data. Um, and uh, they were able to create a framework called Pendana framework based on um, uh, the data that was uh, written in HDF5. Uh, so NOVA, you heard about uh, the work done with NOVA uh, with um, uh, Northwestern uh, in Sun Wu Lee's talk earlier today. Um, sorry about that. Um, and uh, so just a little bit on NOVA. Uh, so uh, we have the NOVA far detector is in Ash River, Minnesota. And uh, you can see in the figure included that it weighs about like 14,000 tons, which is the um, uh, same as size of CMS detector. Um, but this is like all plastic, uh, unlike a very uh, complicated structure that we saw in the CMS detector. And, um, and at the time it was constructed, it was the largest freestanding plastic structure in the world. So that was interesting fact about NOVA. Um, and uh, the goal of NOVA experiment is to make precise measurements describing how neon neutrinos that are created at Fermilab transform into electron neutrinos detected at the site 810 kilometers away. So we uh, partnered with NOVA to do some help with the analysis work. Um, we have provided support for storing NOVA's common analysis format, which is equivalent, uh, I mean, there are the CAF equivalent data in HDF5. Um, NOVA has been writing HDF5 analysis and tuples in production since 2018. Um, so, so similar to what we did for Laria data, basically. So NOVA uh, uh, used the same library to write these files. Um, Pandana uh, meets our ease of use goal. So we still see high level manipulations uh, and whole array manipulations rather than looping over events. Uh, we have used NumPy and Pandas extensively in pan Pandana design. Uh, Python has been viewed as friendlier than C++ and easier for new graduate students to, uh, to learn about uh, uh, the analysis aspect of, uh, of uh, HEP. Um, and uh, what we noticed and learned was that serial performance was surprisingly very good. Uh, users report a faster development cycle compared to C++. They don't need to do any compilation and it's all interactive exploration that they can do. Users report like five to 100 times faster than traditional um, compiled C++ code for some analysis. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, my takeaway uh, message here. So Pandana style of writing analysis code is popular and user-friendly. Serial performance is good. And note that it was designed to allow data parallel processing and we will be getting into that next. Um, here comes the beginning of the SIDEC project then uh, where we are working with many, many experiments and uh, it's, um, the, the, the project itself involves many institutions and uh, the, 
next slide talks about the goal of the CIDAC project. So the goal is to extend the physics reach of LHC and neutrino physics experiments by collaborating with OSCO scientists and utilizing the computing power and scale of national HPC facilities. So significant steps have been made to effectively use state-of-the-art HPC centers to solve HEP problems by better integrating analysis workflows onto HPC systems and blending HPC software and services directly into HPC applications. Um, so the main point is that using native HPC tools and techniques to solve HEP problems um, and uh, using or utilizing HDF5 as a storage format and tool for parallel access to analysis data. Um, so during the CIDEC project, so uh, we have formed collaboration uh, with Northwestern University and through the Rapids Institution and uh, um, the student engagement program was established and uh, you saw one example of it already, this, uh, the work Sun Wuli presented earlier uh, uh, this morning. Um, so I, without getting into or repeating all the research detail that he has already covered, um, I will just go get to uh, the two main points that for, uh, for, for us, concatenation of NOAA experimental data enables high degree of computational parallelism in analysis. So that's one thing that the outcome of uh, having a concatenated file enabled us to do parallelism in analysis or to achieve parallelism in analysis. And then the second bit was that uh, the parallel data concatenation itself, it achieved scalable performance on Cori. That was important because we don't want to spend 36 days, you know, just waiting for our files to be concatenated. Um, moving on to Pendana 2. So in our SIDEC project, we have developed an easy to use environment for fast and scalable analysis. We have already touched on easy to use component um, that, uh, you know, using uh, Python data science tools so we can get there. Um, we are looking at natively data parallel and uh, taking advantage of HPC features. And uh, the same code uh, works on laptops, clusters, and HPC systems. So our plan is for a tool that is not specific to any experiment and not just one HEP community, Collider or Neutrino. Uh, we enhanced Pendana to use MPI for data parallel processing. And uh, only Pendana 2 library code uses MPI for parallel reading and data distribution. And user code is implicit and does not use any MPI calls. So moving from Pendana 1 to Pendana 2, uh, we have seen in-memory data processing code scales perfectly. Uh, we are struggling to make reading scalable. And that's where we are working in collaboration with Northwestern uh, to address parallel I.O. performance issues. So a little bit more on parallel reading in Pandana 2. Um, so we distribute data equally among all ranks, so no communication is necessary. In working with Northwestern Group, we discovered that this pattern of reading interacted poorly with compressed, therefore chunked data sets that we have. Using as many MPI ranks as we would like to use for processing, resulting in reads that were too small and not give uh, performance scalability. We were able to do some tuning of the chunk sizes to improve the situation, but not enough. Uh, we are working on a version of Pandana now, which is Pandana 3, and working on its design to address these issues in multiple ways, uh, such as reducing number of reads and making individual reads larger. Um, so another aspect of uh, use of HDF5 um, is uh, a use of HDF5 in the Exitrix project. So the goals of Exitrix project are to develop production quality machine learning models for charged particle tracking and to utilize distributed training with the GNNs on HPC facilities. Uh, we are looking into applying models to track and shower reconstruction for Dune. Uh, University of Cincinnati is developing a NUML, a package for producing HDF5 files for machine learning directly from experiment data processing frameworks. 
um, uh, so that you know that data can be passed to PyTorch or TensorFlow. Um, so the data contains full simulation truth information needed for training, and uh, the work includes PyNumel for support of DNN workflows. Uh, and here too, uh, there is a collaboration with Northwestern to develop efficient methods for reading collections of neutrino events that are necessary for training DNN models. Um, so with that, I will get into the last uh, part of the uh, talk, uh, which is uh, on um, the work we are doing under uh, HEP Center of uh, Computational Excellence, CCE. We are working uh, with the CMS, Atlas, and Dune in this particular project. Um, so in our SIDEC project, we have demonstrated the efficient and high-performing data access and hence uh, subsequent analysis by using HDF5 representation of the analysis ready data. But in the iOS project under HEP CCE, uh, utilizing the established expertise, we are evaluating the use of HDF5 for intermediate data storage, which is unlike the analysis ready in tabular form. Uh, we are interested in developing an experiment independent parallel IO uh, uh, HDF5 approach um, and as our first attempt, we are attempting to write uh, HEP data products that represent raw detector readouts, um, identified energy deposits, and particle trajectories, et cetera, that have already been serialized using root um, to HDF5. So a little bit more on that. So root is used by all the experiments we are working with as the main storage format and using the data that is already serialized with root facilities allowed us to come up with a, a general layout where we are representing different data products as different data sets in HDF5. Um, and uh, the way data is organized so we can read back data either in the form uh, like event by event or uh, data product by data product. Uh, we are currently using a mini test framework that was developed as a part of CCE work. It's a multi-threaded framework and it is designed to serialize events concurrently for the purpose of studies to be carried out in this project. Um, and uh, just a note here that this is the way uh, or the multi-threading is the way our community is accustomed using multiple cores uh, and they don't, uh, so MPI is not used at all. And the reason multi-threading is used is to save memory and uh, not to make code faster. So the main attraction is that the data can be shared between uh, different threads. Now, so with this multi-threading framework, it supports different uh, input and output modes, um, such as root, HDF5. We have, uh, I believe, two more in the, uh, in the framework setting. Um, and our goal at this point is to understand and compare performance differences among different IO modes. Um, for the first prototype of this work, we have used a high five library, uh, but we later switched to using the, the good old C API, um, but uh, we, we just wrote our own minimal C++ wrappers around them. We know uh, and are aware of the H5 CPP, but at this point, we have not been able to evaluate H5CPP. Um, so we have used uh, data from um, Atlas, CMS, and Dune in our initial design and testing. Uh, we are currently working on a parallel I.O. prototype to be able to simultaneously write events to HDF5 files. Uh, we are seeing some, some, su some success there, at least um, to see the whole prototype working. Um, so, um, so we will see how, how that goes uh, and uh, probably maybe an, uh, a different talk at a later time will, will be good to cover that topic. Uh, we are able to run our serial HDF5 output input mode on Cori. And uh, next, what we are looking at is to just do comprehensive performance studies to establish baseline on Cori, to per do performance studies on parallel design, and most importantly, explore uh, alternate layouts and improvements to what we have uh, for writing HDF data sets. Um, so this use of HDF5 is integrated with root and we are evaluating it. Uh, we will explore alternate approaches with HDF5 layout in collaboration with the HDF5 team at the LBNL and uh, our other collaborators uh, in the CCE project. 
Okay. So now I will get into um, future directions. Um, so, uh, so, so here we are listing future directions we would like to see for HDF5 in terms of what we need from HDF5. So we need improved parallel writing performance for compressed data. Um, so that is the work that uh, was uh, addressed here by Sunwoo's talk and the work that uh, Northwestern has done. Um, we need efficient storage for and reading for sparse data. So to just give you an example, most NOVA data sets, uh, they would be naturally addressed at uh, six, dimension, uh, six dimensional arrays. Uh, but they would be very sparse arrays. So efficient storage and reading of sparse arrays would allow us to simplify our code rather than doing all sorts of manipulations. So for in terms of our work, the future directions are, we are exploring a different computational model for Pandana. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Pandana 3, that would allow fewer and larger reads to overcome the problem we face with reading compressed blocks. Um, we are interested in evaluation of alternative C++ interfaces to HDF5, for example, uh, H5CPP, to understand what advantages they have for our community. Um, and uh, so Dune is interested in using the MPI-based parallel writing ability for H of HDF5 for event building. Um, so data that are read from different parts of a large detector, uh, such as Dune, uh, is read in many different processes. So typically, HEP experiments, they have used bespoken distributed uh, processing code to collect these data into a single process for, uh, for their work. Um, this is called event building. And what Dune is uh, looking into do is uh, uh, investigating using HDF5 and its support of MPI parallel writing into a single file to solve this event building problem. Um, as part of uh, HEP, uh, CCE iOS work, uh, we are looking into parallel HDF writes into a single file already. And Dune is part of the, that, that work too. So we have greatly benefited from working with our colleagues at Northwestern University. And uh, in future, we will plan to continue doing so. Um, and I would like to thank uh, our Northwestern collaborators. We have learned a great deal uh, from them and uh, we would uh, continue to do so. Uh, in conclusion, HPC facilities are increasingly important to our community. Uh, we argue that HEP tasks using HPC native technologies uh, uh, as opposed to porting our community tools to run somehow on HPC is the best way forward. Um, we have found HDF5 to be a powerful library that provides good performance and solves uh, important problems for us. Uh, our use cases are stressing some aspects of HDF5 that have not in the past been so severely stressed. Uh, we would like to continue working with the HDF community to improve these aspects of uh, the tools. So we could really benefit from like parallel writing of compressed data and value of uh, sparse arrays. And with that, I will move to my last slide that is acknowledgements. Uh, so thanks to the SIDEC project, TEPCC project, Formulab, um, the LDRD project grants. So, so it was like, a, you know, a bunch of uh, you know, funding projects that, uh, that made this work happen. Um, and with that, I think I will say I'm done <laughs> uh, for now. So I'll be happy to take any questions. and. Uh, uh, for for some of it, I, I do see that uh, you know the co-authors uh, Mark and uh, Jim uh, are online as well. Um, so you know, uh, we're happy to take any questions. Thank you, and I wish uh, HDF Group can work with you with Fermi more on those topics. Yeah, yeah, we would and love I, to do that. You know, I mean, uh, and I think you have done a great deal with uh, Mark's LDRD project and. Uh, Right. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. To, sorry, I keep on interrupting. Okay, I'll let you talk. Oh, no, no. Uh, sorry. Just to comment, that we are um, improvements to uh, parallel compression. It's in our queue. It's very close. So we will be working. Unfortunately, we will address it pretty soon. 
uh, it's not an easy problem to solve, and Jordan may comment on this, but it's a very high priority on our list, and we we going back to start looking at scalability of the issue. Oh, thank you, Elena. That's that's good to know. And uh, yeah, as, and at that time, I was just saying that you know, for 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 example, for the CCE projects, we are working with uh, Surin and his team as well. So. Uh, so yeah, so there there are like sparse collaborations here and there, <laughs> for sure. Well, one thing I might mention, it would be it would definitely be interesting to me if um, you happen to have something like a micro kernel or you know a, an example application where you have issues with the performance of parallel writing um, with compression. Because I'm definitely going back and reviewing the feature uh, soon, like Elena mentioned. And we're looking for a lot of these use cases where people are really having problems with the performance on it so we can get an idea of what's going on. Okay, so for that, I would, I think, defer that question to Mark and if Viking is online. So if you can comment on that. The program that the concatenation program that Sun Wu uh, gave a talk about earlier today and that we're relying heavily upon to take the small files that are the natural product of the experiments to create the large pro files that we want for analysis. Uh, that program is publicly available. And so if, if you contact e either Saba or Sun Wu or Wei Kang or, or myself or Jim, who's also on the line here, I think we'd, we'd all be happy to talk with you about it. And um, you know, we are happy to supply large data sets to be used for performance testing. We've, uh, we've, we'll do, we'll do. We, have, we have ample large data sets. We'll do. <laughs> sure, and if I remember right from Sun Wu's presentation, I think from those graphs, the majority of the time was being spent in compression and also some of the partial chunk reading being done. So surely there's improvements we can make there. Okay. Thank you, Jordan. And thank you, Mark. So uh, there was a comment from Andy Gotts uh, about some tools, recommendation. Okay. So I have not looked at H5 Web at all, but uh, it looks interesting and definitely will follow up. I should There's a it. presentation later, uh, I think okay. tomorrow, uh, on H5Web, you might want to catch. Um, so I, I had a question, uh, is Fermilab uh, thought about using Kubernetes as a, a parallelization platform, as an alternative uh, to MPI? I will not know the answer to that question, actually. So I think there is another SCD group that deals with some of that stuff. Mark, would you know more about it or Jim, about Kubernetes and their usage at the SCD? Yes, a little bit. They're they're using it in the in kind of the batch processing systems. I mean, they've been working on on an implementation of it, a way to put it into their systems for a while now. They have a lot of expertise with it. I don't know if it's necessarily a replacement for MPI, but I can ask them. You know, I think uh, it might be interesting, especially in contexts where you don't need um, kind of close coupling of, of the workers, and that may, you know, reflect, uh, you know, some of the, the issues uh, you need. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely using it for like AWS access or Google Cloud, right? That's where, where mm -hmm. they've, they've, they've been concentrating the effort on. Okay, cool. But this is very exciting how HZ5 is used, you know, in fundamental sciences to really study the world. It's it's very uh, inspiring, I would say. 